I was out recently and a, like a five-year-old came up to me he's like I love your bag and I was like this makes sense for me that like a little kid loves how I dress. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's your girl Emily Curl with iHeartRadio and today we're hanging out with the lead singer of Mr. Wives. We have Mandy with us here today. Mandy, how are you? Thank you so much for being here. Hello, thank you for having me. This is the most fun I've had in a very long time. <laughs> okay, this is gonna be a fun shoot for me too. This is not like our normal interviews because we are obviously inside your closet. So we are gonna get the full array of your favorite items, some sentimental pieces, but first off, okay, so tell me, this is where all the magic happens, right? This is the closet, this is all the stuff I would usually take on tour but RIP tour, don't know her. Oh. Haven't seen her in a long time. <laughs> All right. Well, we're reliving it today. <laughs> yeah. Now, I feel like you have such funky and fun style. How would you personally describe your own style? I can never really answer this question because I think it goes in so many different avenues and I can't really describe. I feel like that's the same with our music too. It doesn't really fit in like one box thing. So I think just individuality, you know, self-expression of whatever I'm feeling. And I never like to limit myself of like, oh, I stay in this lane and I like just these things. Clearly, I love everything. And this is just my stage closet, my regular closet. Sometimes I'm like, how many people are inside my body? Because I love so many different, you know, life has so much oh fun gosh. color and patterns to offer. Yeah. So that's so cool to me. So this is your stage closet and we can see kind of what it looks like. We're going to dive in deeper. What does your regular closet look like? It's just as colorful, but it's more like like this kind of thing. You know, a lot of plaids yeah. and gingham and sundresses and that kind of stuff. But it's still funky and fun and very colorful, but just not as big. <laughs> so Mandy, the way this is going to work is I have a couple of prompts for you. And so whatever item comes to mind, I want you to pull it and show the camera and tell us a little bit about it. Okay. Sound good? Yes. Show me your favorite thing right now in your closet. Okay. I think probably this sequin suit. Yes, it is uh, also the most comfortable item I think I own. Uh, I wore it for the live dream and sequins can be super itchy and this one is nice and lined and it's structured but loose fitting and it's just, you know, checks off all the boxes as far as comfort and fun. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to wear her on tour. I never got the chance. I bought it for tour, obviously it didn't happen, but at least I got to wear it in the live dream. So. Yeah, true. Yeah, what does this memory take you back to? What, like when you're on stage with this with this outfit? Well, I've not been on stage with it yet, but um, we did a live stream show of the album and I wore this one during the segment that was all the clouds and it was like very aquatic and blue. And I just like feel all those colors and see all the clouds. It's cloud nine. It's just a cloud nine suit, you know? The cloud uh, nine <laughs> jumpsuit, yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, so let's do our second prompt. Show me the item that makes you feel the most badass when you wear it. Maybe another suit. I think suits are. <gasps> is this a pink leather? Thing. Is this latex? What is this? No, it's like, can you see it shimmers and sparkles? <gasps> Oh yeah, I wore this for ACL and it was just, I don't know, I think there's something incredibly empowering about suits. All the dresses and stuff are so fun, but I think when you put on something that especially, you know, I feel like women sometimes are put in a box of what we're supposed to look like and how we're supposed to dress and going against that and being in the middle of not, you know, conforming to gender norms and any of that stuff, I think suits are good for representing that kind of expression. Okay, so Mandy, what about the piece of clothing that you wear the most? I actually have worn this a lot. I bedazzled Ooh. this <gasps> sweatsuit. You <laughs> bedazzled it yourself? Yes, I did this and it's actually the last uh, show outfit. We played uh, Harrisburg and I had a wardrobe malfunction and uh, I just told one of my bandmates, Jesse, like, play over the rainbow on trumpet and like ran off stage and changed into Old Faithful. And yeah, sweatsuits never let you down. But it's fun to go through your closet of like, this was just a regular gray sweatsuit and you can make it a little more fun and shine a little more. After you played in the sweatsuit, do you now want to play in it again? Or was this like a one-time thing? You're glad you had it, but you're not bringing it back. No, I was like, oh my goodness, this is a like life-changing experience of just, you don't have to worry about anything, adjusting yourself. It was so comfortable. I actually started bedazzling more sweatsuits because of it. I made this one recently. What? I did the black <laughs> rainbow. And I was like, oh, this is the way. Wait, this like, is so we're... cool. I want this. I want a Mandy yeah. bedazzled sweatsuit. 
I'll make you one. But oh my goodness, such a game changer. And I was like, I think I'm only wearing sweatsuits going into the next tour, especially coming out of quarantine where I barely got dressed this past year. I was like, we're Same. we're going in baby steps here. So we're going to go with sweatsuits and just bedazzle them to make them a little more elevated. <laughs> so if someone at home wanted to bedazzle a sweatsuit, what's the secret? I probably, I just get old hot glue gun, some jewels. <laughs> And you just go to town? Is there any rhyme or reason? I'm sure there is. I'm sure there's a real way to do it. And I actually know there is and how you space it and how you attach the jewels, but I'm go the easier route on these things. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a fun one. If you have them in here, what is your go-to pair of shoes? We're going on a journey here. Can you see we have a dock row? Uh, those are probably the most like functional shoes that I have. However, I did wear them recently and was like, how the hell did I used to perform in these every day? Cause they're like pretty weighted, you know, like they're, they've got a big platform and <laughs> I wore them recently and I was like, I'm so, I'm so weak. Like I used to like high kick in these on stage, jump around for an hour and a half and I wore them for a couple hours out and I was like, Oh, no, no, no. Our feet are not ready for this. <laughs> so what's going to be your new shoe? What's going to be your new go-to? I'm just wearing slippers. Or just, <laughs> I'm wearing orthopedic sneakers. This is also a good pair of Nikes that were for Super Bloom. That, They're Super uh, Bloomin'! Oh my god. I had them custom made by this incredible designer, Lisa Wong, who uh, made these. And I thought, again, it would be a great tour shoe. Haven't broken them in yet, but uh, they're those far more comfortable than a Doc Martin. <laughs> I also have to ask, are those like tall rainbow boots in the back? Are those rainbow rain boots? Yes, they are. I need to see these. Show you these are pretty. <laughs> no, there's, I can't handle those. You also need the dress to go with it. Oh my God, pull out the dress. We have a dress that goes with the whole thing, yeah. Okay, here we go. What about your other favorite accessory that you have in your closet? This bag, I finally splurged and got this uh, Susan Alexandra bag. I think it's Susan Alexandra, but it's just, she makes all these fun beaded colorful bags and they're pretty pricey, but I, I was eyeing them for probably a few years and I finally was like, all right, this is my like designer adult bag. <laughs> So I was out recently and a, like a five-year-old came up to me, he's like, I love your bag. And I was like, this makes sense for me that like a little kid loves how I dress. <laughs> We've kind of touched on this, but what about your favorite piece to wear on stage? Probably a, a loofah. That's what we've been calling them. Is this the tutus? <laughs> all the all the tool dresses. But yeah, we've been calling them the loofah. I'm like, I should start selling like actual loofahs as merch for, or we'll just make these dresses for merch. But yeah, I bought one and it was like another thing that I was like, this is so comfortable. No matter what I do, it just stays in place. I just sew straps onto them because they're usually like strapless. And uh, yeah, you don't worry about any of the like discomforts on stage yeah. and you just wear shorts under them and I can kick and jump as high as I want. And they look so fun and they photograph really cool. And I got it mostly because we were doing, we were opening for 21 Pilots. And when you're, you know, an opening band in an arena, you're like, how do you make this somewhat visually pleasing or stand out or memorable besides the performance. So I was like, if I just wear a highlighter tutu, I think people all the way in the nose will be able us. to see us. Yeah. That's also so cool that you sew your own straps on. So are you pretty handy like that? It is really fun to embellish clothes and make them more fun. I feel like I've been doing that since the beginning of the band, especially having no money when we were first starting out. I'd always be like sewing or hot glue gunning like pom poms or sequins or Legos. I used to like put Legos on my shorts and like what? it's always been a fun way to like elevate your clothes, especially on stage because that's like such a fun moment to just take life to this other level of how you express yourself. This may not work for this closet, but what has been your best friend during quarantine? Probably, probably sweatpants, honestly. That's like the what I wore. Ones? The bedazzled ones, I tie dyed a bunch. I basically took all the like solid ones that I had and just revamped them, whether it was like painting on them or tie dyeing. And like, you can't beat a sweatsuit. It's just the most comfortable thing. And I'd say slippers, but I barely wore slippers. I was really just like wearing those like cozy plush socks. And that was the extent <laughs> of like putting anything on my feet all year. <laughs> what about a piece that's most sentimental to you? Okay. So my mom sent this to me. This was mine when I was five and it was a floor light, like this touched the floor when I was 
little and now it's a pencil skirt. <laughs> did you craft this? How did you do that? No, no, no. It was, um, it was just like, you know, like playing dress up when you're little. My mom kept some of those items and she sent this to me a couple of years ago. And I just was like, it's so sentimental because I'm like, I'm so proud of her. Like she stayed true to herself since she was a five-year-old little girl. And I'm like, she'd also be proud of this closet and be like, yes. Yes, honey, you did it. What would you say to younger Mandy who had that sequin skirt and dreaming these big dreams, and now all the success that you've had, what would Mandy now say to Mandy then? I would just tell her that I'm, I'm proud that I stuck to who I, who I was and went through so much and still continued to be resilient and push through and not let others change who I was. And uh, I feel like it's pretty cool that those messages that I gravitated towards as a five-year-old is still how I feel to this day. Show me the perfect Super Bloom outfit. I don't have the entire dress here because it's so big, but the designer who did the the Nikes uh, sewed all of the outfits for the Super Bloom like shoot. And she made, I was like, how do we make a dress that just feels like poppy fields? And she basically <laughs> made this insane, <laughs> This is just the bottom. And she made it where there's another bottom underneath that's shorter. So like when I go on tour, I can wear the smaller version of this. But yeah, this is pretty insane. Anytime we have a shoot and we like need fake flowers to fill like whatever shoot we're doing, I'll always bring this dress because it's <laughs> like I'm perfect. So many bodies. <laughs> yeah. It's very versatile, you know? No, what's so cool to me is Super Bloom is also a really personal story for you. Tell us a little bit about the inspiration behind not only that song, but also the visuals, these flowers is what they represent for you. You know, I was in a really, really dark place of going through a divorce and um, just being completely broken and shattered like beyond any point I've ever been before. And uh, I was out in LA writing the album and my sister came out to be with me because I was just like, I just needed comfort and home. And I was really just like spiraling. And the super bloom was happening at that time. And we were like, oh, it'd be so nice to go like for grandma and my mom. Cause like poppies are a big, they're a special flower in our family. So we just went out for that. I got there and I was just like moved to tears of seeing this just like vast, botanical phenomenon that is just so mind-blowing like it just is no picture could ever do it justice but I just was really drawn to the metaphor of these poppies felt a lot like me like it's in the barren desert and these flowers aren't supposed to grow but they still punch through and they're resilient and they super bloom and they make it to the other side and I just remember standing in that poppy field and I'm just like this is the album, like this is where, this is where I'm at in life and I'm gonna get through this and I'm gonna super bloom. And so that's where this whole world came to be. Oh my gosh, Mandy, that's such a beautiful story. What does your super bloom in 2021 look like? I honestly just wanna like be happy and at peace with myself. You know, in whatever form that comes, I feel like I've always been really hard on myself and always chasing this big goal and feeling like I'm never gonna be good enough, I'm never gonna get here. And this year of like being away from it all and not having it, I was like, oh, I've gotta be good with me first so that when or if these things ever happen or we, you know, the band succeeds on a level I've dreamt of since I was a little girl, like I will be able to embrace it. And if it doesn't happen, I'm okay to pivot with my life. I'm excited for you and this journey. And thank you for sharing your closet with us as well. <laughs> Anytime. Thank you for hanging out with me and uh, letting me dust off all these fun clothes to show how insane I am. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for watching our closet tour with Mandy from Mr. Wives. What was your favorite piece she pulled out of the closet? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to stream Super Bloom by Mr. Wives out now on iHeartRadio. And we'll see you next time. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Did you like that video? You can check out more over here. And don't forget to subscribe to iHeart right here. And if you're already a longtime fan, make sure you ring the bell down below so you don't miss a single video. Bye guys.